Isang magandang Miyerkules sa inyo lahat. Ito po ang December 22 edition ng The Stock Market Today. Three days na lang. Pasko na. Nag-Christmas shopping na ba po tayo? Maraming punta ako sa mall. At uh, agagahan po natin. Ito po si Benji Chidoro. Ako po ay isang retired bank officer na nagsimula mag-invest sa Philippine stock market noong 2007. And I do this report every day which I started August of last year. I also report the latest news on your favorite and most active stocks. If you like the content, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. If you have stocks in mind that you want reviewed, just comment on the comment box and I will prioritize. Ang ating financial news ay tungkol sa Felix. Kasama po ang financial headlines at ang resulta ng trading sa ating PSE ngayong araw, December 22, 2021, dito lamang sa The Stock Market Today. So let's go to our financial headlines from the Philippine Star. Felix says $224 million mine ready by 2024 to 2025. Then FLI's 10 billion bonds four times oversubscribed. AC Energy Unit subscribed to shares of Polar Project or Solar Project developer. And then we have IMI installs first EV charging transport system for Ayala. Mm, electric uh, volt charging siguro ito. Then Converge get stop rating for maiden bond offering. Sino kaya itong solar project developer na ito? Baka si Espinec? Ito nga ba? Ah, hindi. Nature's Renewable Energy Development. Okay, so let's now go to our top stories. And this is on Felix Mining. Felix says $224 million mine ready by 2024 to 2025. Felix Mining Corp. announced its plan for a $224 or $224 million Silangan Copper and Gold project in Surigao del Norte with an estimated 571 tons worth of mineral resources. Felix will be leading this project along with its subsidiary, Silangan Mindanao Mining Company, Incorporated. This is an opportunity for the mining industry to play a pivotal role as we enter the post-pandemic world, says MMCI Chief Operating Officer Michael T. Toledo in a media roundtable on Tuesday. Si Mike Toledo, naging announcer yan ng GMA7. And I know he is a lawyer. We all know how much mining can generate so much in terms of income, revenues, and taxation, and how it can also generate employment if allowed to flourish. We can hopefully propel the economy as we move on to the year 2022, add Mr. Toledo, who is also chairman of the Chamber of Mines of the Philippines. The Silangan Gold or Copper Gold Project will initially process 2,000 tons of ore a day until this reaches 12,000 tons a day or 4 million tons annually upon its completion. Mining is not an enemy, it's poverty. And it's the goal of Felix, SMMCI, as well as the COMP, or Chamber of Mines of the Philippines, to make sure that the role is played the best level, to really do what needs to be done and ensure the benefits of mining trickles down to all our people, Mr. Toledo said. The mine is composed of two ore deposits that are 0.52% copper and 0.64% gold, higher than any other Felix projects. The copper and gold grades in Silangan are twice as high as the current grades of Padkal, which for decades had been the lifeblood of Felix, but is now approaching the end of its mine life, said Yul Lalio B. Austin, President and Chief Executive Officer of Felix. The project is divided into two phases, the first phase covering the 
Boyongan deposit. Boyongan has 81 million tons of ore containing 0.67% copper and 1.12 grams of gold per ton. It is projected to produce 2.8 million ounces of gold and 993 million pounds of copper during its mine life. Once the second phase is commenced, Baguio deposit will increase annual production to 6.5 million tons. The first phase has a mine life of 28 years and will take two and a half years to develop. Beginning the second quarter of 2022, we will be ready for commercial use by late 2024 or early 2025. Okay, so those are our news for the day. And this is good news, you know. All the mining, there uh, is environmental concern, no? But um, if manage if manage well, then you mitigate the environmental cost when you mine, plus the benefits that you will get in terms of uh, job creation, the revenues that you will get from taxation, and uh, revenues that you will get when you sell the copper and gold. So, before we go to the Philippine Stock Exchange Index, let me read some uh, comments from our subscriber. Good day, sir. Pasilip po ng GMA7, sabi po ni Rudy Mateo. Okay, we'll include GMA7. And then, uh, pakisilip po ang MER and GFC tanks, sabi po ni George Kwan. Then, Raul Y says, pero pwede po EWNVLL. Okay, sige po. At, um, Include po natin yan. Raul Y commented, medyo maingay sir ang background. Sorry po uh, mga subscribers at uh, mga viewers. Kasi sometimes po I record on a place where medyo maingay. No? Yesterday nasa Starbucks po ako. Medyo maingay talaga doon sa Starbucks. But uh, I have to do the recording there. Kasi I, I had to meet somebody elsewhere, very near that place. And um, I have to make use of my time well. So, possession na po, uh, as much as possible, I wanted to minimize the noise. Ano? The other day, I was in Glorieta, and I did a blog in the store in the sa Silicon Valley. And uh, medyo maingay din. Ano? Pero pa, pasensya na po kayo. And I try my best to to minimize the noise. So sorry po sa, sa mga subscriber po natin. And uh, in the meantime, let's now go to the Philippine Stock Exchange and the Philippine Stock Exchange Index. The PSEI lost 47.87 points, 0.67% down. To finish at 71.19.19, let's put up our indicators. So it's uh, bearish. Yung RSI po is 44.43, a bearish number. But the support of the PSE index is still at the MA100 at uh, 7060 to 7062. Yun po yung support level niya. Yung market summary naman i 86 companies advanced 83 declined while 69 remained unchanged the all share index also lost 0.22 percent while the financials holding companies properties and services were in the red led by the holding companies losing by 1.81 percent however the industrials and minings were up or in the green on the Market activity naman, we will be reviewing the following. Let's review GMA7, MER, JFC, East-West, VLL, and URC. Tingnan po natin si URC. And now let's start with GMA7. Okay, moving sideways lang po si GMA. And uh, since November 24, nag crossover po yung... Uh, 50 days a uh, 20 day exponential which is above the candlestick indicating a medium to short term 
very strand, no? And then the M100 is already piercing through the candlestick. And if we see red candlesticks pa rin, ay masasabi na po natin bearish po ang GMA7. 41.49 po yung ating RSI dyan. Which is also bearish. Yung support level nandito po sa area ng to nasa 13 pesos while the resistance level is within this area for GMA nasa 1520 now when I talk of support and resistance these are not exact points but these are areas then tingnan naman natin si Mer Mer continues to move upwards although there were three red uh, declines you know red candlesticks po but the closing price for today were or was above our 20 day short term exponential and tingnan niyo po ito no yung ating um, mga indicators are all under the candlestick meaning there is a bullish trend for mer yung ating rsi is also bullish at 54 now if we will be drawing a channel the channel follows the support kasi M100 po ang support natin dito eh yan po yung support ni Mer nasa M100 at yan po yung pinaka channel po niya so yung ating uh, resistance level ay nasa 300 kung susundan po natin ang channel ay nasa 308 po yung ating resistance level niya uh, for up to tingnan natin ha assuming that uh, we extend this up to December 31 nasa 310 po yung resistance level ni Mer and the support level will be at uh, 294 but right now the support level is Emma 100 at 292 so more or less po yun po ang galaw ni Mer. And then si JFC naman. Oh, where is si JFC? And it had continuous red candlestick. However, it had a bounce today. And the bounce occurred at this level here that would form our support. No, 210 po yung ating support. The stock closed at 219. And kung tingting ting niyo po yung ating indicators, nag-cross over na po yung medium at saka short term. Ito po yung tinatawag po natin, yung tinatawag po ng mga traders na death cross. Yan po. Pagka nag-cross over yung 50 day, doon sa 20 day, na nasa above, nasa itaas ng candlestick. Bearish po yan. Conversely, Kung magko-cross over po siya under tulad po nito, meron po siyang cross over dito. Yan, yung area po ito. Yan po yung golden cross. So, ibig sabihin po niyan, bullish po ang ating uh, stock market or stock na stock na ito. But in the meantime, bearish po siya although there is a bounce today. Now, if the bounce or if the increase or increase in prices continue and we see more candlesticks ay maaring nag-reverse na po yung trend and uh, the price should be higher than our indicators meaning nag uh, na negate na po yung uh, downward trend niya no but in the meantime na nakikita ko po ay downward trend po si JFC based on the RSI and our indicators 210 po yung ating support level niya. And then EW or East-West, there is a bounce also although it is bullish. I'm sorry, bearish. Yung ating support level nandito po sa area nito. Nasa 925 po yung kanyang uh, support level dahil po nare-reject po siya sa area nito at sa area nito. Now more or less, yan po yung rejection area po niya. RSI is also bearish at 47. So, yung kanyang movement ngayon, although it had a green candlestick now, which is, I think, significant. 
kung makakita po tayo ng another green candlestick which is higher than our indicators, then we can say that the trend have reversed. The meantime, abangan lang po natin ang mga pangyayari kay EW dahil yung ating RSI is bearish at 47.92. And then VLL. Okay, Vista Land, it is bearish also. So yung support level niya is in this area. Yan po, nasa 340 po. Actually, yung yung closing price po ay nasa 344 which is uh, the support area already. Laki ng engulfing red dito. Yan, ang laki niyan. So may news kaya dito. Bakit? Wala naman. Wala naman siya. It's just uh, market sentiment actually. So more or less yan po. So bearish po siya. Above the candlestick po yung ating indicator. Ito po. Yan po. Pagka nasa itas po yan ay hindi po pababa po yung trend ng ating stocks. So yung support po for Vista Land is at uh, 340 or within that area. Now Let's see another stock. Our final stock would be URC. Okay, may bounce din si URC. Most of the stocks had a bounce from a uh, downward sentiment. Again, support is here in this level. Yan po. Dahil nagbabounce po siya at uh, hindi po siya tumutuloy. Na-observe din po natin yan dito. So, nasa 127.30 po. So, dito po ay nagkakaroon ng bounce. Dito rin po ay nagkakaroon ng bounce. So, there is also a slight upward volume here, although it is not much. So, abangan po natin din si URC. Kung, kasi kung significant po yung volume, 60 to 70 percent of the time po, tataas po the following day or two. Yan po yung uh, aking observation dyan. So, yan po si URC with the support at 127.29 and the sentiment is bearish. Okay, yan po ang ating reports sa stock market. The 22nd day of December 2021. Ito po si Benji Chidoro nagpapaalala an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagtangkilik hanggang sa muli. Stay safe, God bless, and bye for now.